Okay, thank you. Hello and welcome everybody. I'll be giving the last talk before lunch, so I'll not try to uh, keep you too long. I'll be talking about uh, Potman containers with systemd and Ansible. Thanks everyone for stopping by. So we'll talk about a uh, little introduction. I'll talk about Podman. I'll talk about systemd. I'll talk, shortly talk about Ansible and what Quadlet is, and then the live demo, which is basically what you're here for. My name is Johannes Kastel. I'm a Linux trainer and consultant at B1 Systems. Um, there's the OBS and Mastodon and GitLab and whatever things, so you can find me afterwards. I'm a trainer, consultant, systems administrator, architect. Spielkind is the German word for someone who just likes to get his hands dirty with technology. And I want to understand how things work. And I want to see if there is a reason why I can use the software so I can try it out. Um, I do lots of configuration management. I do lots of infrastructure as code and containers and CI, CD. I also do some project-related things like Kanban and Scrum. And uh, as I said previously, I'm the Ansible maintainer for OpenSUSE and some other cloud-native tools. B1 Systems is a German company founded in 2004, around 140, 150 employees. Um, we do all funny kinds of things you might expect around open source and uh, data centers and Linux and cloud and, yeah, you, you see. So all of the funny things that I can hand my, uh, get my hands on and uh, can play around with. And uh, we do that for a long time, and I have the honor to do different things and, uh, yeah, play around with lots of these technologies. And one of them is Podman. For those of you who have not yet heard of Podman or who have just heard the name and wondered what the hell it is, Podman is a container engine. It runs OCI containers based on OCI container images. That's what people call Docker images, but um, it can run rootless and rootful containers. It is meant to be a replacement for Docker or it is a replacement for Docker. It has a lot of things that it does differently, including that it doesn't need a service. And due to the rootless containers being one of the main goals, uh, it just does a lot of things differently, and you do not hand, uh, have to hand over root access to your machines to everyone using Docker. Systemd, just for the people afterwards reading the slides, uh, I think all of you are familiar with systemd. It's the service manager that most of the Linux distributions are using to start up services and stop services and do service interdependency and things um, with uh, service units. And uh, Podman can generate these service units for you. So if you say, I want to have a container, um, you can make a systemd unit out of that and just manage the container like you would do with a normal systemd unit. System CTL start and stop and status and uh, enable and whatever you need. Um, which makes it really, really easy to just run containers not only once but also have them run on boot and have them uh, be managed by systemd both as system and user scope. Um, for those of you not familiar with Ansible, Ansible is a configuration management system like Puppet, like Chef, like SaltStack. In opposition to the three mentioned, just uh, it, it doesn't require a central server, or it's not designed to require a central server. Uh, it, you just need SSX, SSH access to the machine that you want to target and Python on that to run all of the various things, and you can configure almost everything you want to do on that machine, uh, packages, services, users, and things like that. In addition, there's lots of collections and roles that allow you to not only target one server and install a package, but also set up 
your GitHub instance, your Grafana instance, your Netbox, your GCP environment and infrastructure, your Cisco switches and your Arista switches and your F5 load balancers, and there's a collection for many, many different things, including one connection that can handle containers with Podman, which obviously I had to try out because it's a, a really nice thing to manage not only a, a Apache package directly on the host, but just run a container with Nginx or with Apache or with WordPress or whatever. And before we go into the live demo, let me just quickly mention there's Coatlet, which was separate and is now part of Podman. Basically, it allows you to define files in ETC container systemd, and as soon as systemd starts, it collects these files and generates systemd units out of them uh, on the fly. So you can do a dot .container file, which contains a container. You can do a dot .network or a dot .volume. And as Podman can do some Kubernetes things, you can just give it some Kubernetes manifests, um, and it will create some containers out of it. You can also define those in a .cube file. Um, there's a really nice uh, live demo by Egal Bloom, um, which shows you how to get uh, a WordPress uh, instance with a database in the background up and running with a Quadlet. And with that out of the way, let's get to the live demo. I prepared a short, small Vagrant setup. Um, so we'll be uh, building up a VM, and we'll be installing Podman on there. And before I show you the details, uh, basically, uh, I think you can read that to small. OK, looks good. Then let's just do a Vagrant up and let the demo gods be with us. Um, for those of you not familiar with Vagrant, how dare you check out Vagrant? Really nice. Vagrant will build up the VM. You can tell it how to provision that VM. In this case, it runs Ansible, and Ansible does things inside the VM. You can also do more than one VM. You have a database and some web servers. You have a cluster of whatever you want to build up. Just define it, run it. it. It builds up a new, fresh set of VMs, and you can start playing with that. Very, very nice. While this is running in the background, let me just show you what we're using. This is called a Vagrant file. Uh, yeah, It runs OpenSUSE Leap 15.4 with 2 gigabyte of memory, two CPUs. I want to have a host name, and I want to use Ansible for the provisioning using this playbook. Um, you can do a simple rootful Nginx container. This is the playbook that we just ran on all of the hosts. Please use that role and create a rootful Nginx container. Um, I just built that role to show you how to do that. It's really, really simple. You can do the same with an unprivileged Nginx container. I just said we can do rootless containers on, with Podman, and systemd can do rootless uh, user scope system services. Um, yeah, and you need to do some things differently, and then you're done. And then let's see how that goes. So we are still running that. And let's hope that it just finishes. Yes, OK. So Ansible is now running and doing some things. Of course, I want to have a bash RC and a, uh, so I can log in and I have my environment. We want to have uh, Tmux installed, and now we're installing Podman. Um, and then in the end, it will hopefully show us our container. <laughs> Installing packages might be a bit slow if the network is full, but obviously we need Podman. Now it's done with installing 
It creates the directory. It creates the rootful Nginx container. It starts the Nginx service that is running the container. It, it enables the service, and we get that index HTML. I can do a vagrant uh, address. Shiny. And then let's see. Keep your fingers crossed. Hey, it's working. We have a Nginx container inside of our VM. And basically, that's all there is to it. The actual role is just an Ansible role. You have some, some tasks that you want to do. In this case, you might encounter Thing, things you just saw. We're creating the directory here. We're creating the container. We're starting the service. We're enabling the service, and then we're done. And that's basically how you write the Ansible code. And that's basically everything. Are there any questions? Yes, there is one. So uh, you said the config files for um, Podman systemd units are below uh, etc container systemd, right? Yes or no. If you're using Quadlet, you are defining them in etc container systemd. Uh, let me just jump back. You can, of course, just what what the role does. It's really simple. It writes a container service file. It's just a systemd unit. It does so in etc systemd system, whatever the name, dot service. This is just because the role does it directly. But if you want to do it differently, you can use Quadlet and just define things there. And they get automatically uh, moved or, or converted into a systemd unit. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just wondering whether this is also the directory for rootless containers, because uh, that looks more like rootful containers. Um, Qu Quadlet itself, I haven't tried, but you should be able to use um, something in your home directory, .config, yeah. somewhere there. Um, I'm not sure if it works out of the box. Um, I have the same Vagrant setup for for the root full container. Uh, there's another branch that just does a rootless container, which does everything and starts everything, but still the machine won't be reachable because the user is not logged in. There's no user session, and thus there's no user service running, so you can't reach the machine. But you, you might encounter things like that, but in general it should work. OK, thanks. You're welcome. Other questions? I think we might have time for one or two. There's one. Hey, thank you. Quick question. How do you generate a system D file? So as of now, what you in principle have to do, you need to generate a container, then generate a system D file from this container, then maybe modify this one, add the labels, for instance, for auto update. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a bit cumbersome. Is there a better way? Mm -hmm. Um, there is a containers podman collection that can run a module called podman container. And I just say what the name is, what the image is, what the state is, what the ports I want to publish, and then I can tell systemd, or I can tell Ansible to make podman generate a systemd service file. I want to have that here, for example, for the rootless user and it gets automatically generated. And uh, that, that is something that Podman can do from a container definition. And Ansible is using Podman to do that, and you end up with your systemd unit. If you need to modify that, I would always do some kind of automation. Never ever touch a file manually if you can automate it. it it gets a lot easier if you just tweak a setting here, run Ansible again, and the new setup is there. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Time for one more, maybe. Uh, so this Podman container, containers Podman, Podman container, it's using this Quadlet, or, or this is yes. this is not using Quadlet. This is using just Podman without Quadlet. Um, I just showed Quadlet because it's really easy to generate files with Ansible inside etc container systemd. Um, I think they are planning on uh, including Quadlet in that collection, so you can directly pipe in. But the question is, if you, if you manually create the files, having a generator to convert it to systemd is useful. If you are already automating the generation of those files, why go two steps when you can just go one and have a systemd unit somewhere where it, uh, it directly is being created? OK, thank you. So, if there are any more questions, I'll be around until Sunday. Just uh, have a chat in the hall or contact me in the various ways I showed. Have a nice day, everyone. Have a nice conference. And I was asked to uh, ask you guys, it's now lunchtime. It would be nice if the video team could have the first round at the buffet because uh, they need to work afterwards. So. Let them eat first, and then you can have a go and enjoy your lunch and have a nice conference. Thank you.